But then you have to keep leveling up as a woman. You have to keep creating new dimensions in order to express your womanhood and your femininity that will attract the type of men that you want to select from. She is dark as obsidian. And it's light and beautiful and bright as the sun, the salt of the earth, fire burning and water dripping. How could we be using goddess of magic? She is timeless. The pillow that doesn't need a plug. She is the wildest woman. And let me say it again. For those who need to hear it, the black woman is God. Let me say it again, the black woman is God. Listen up. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo. I am your girl, Debbie and Nikki, the original wireless woman, and welcome to my spot, room 303. If you are new, welcome to the crew, but my returnees, you know what we do. If you like this video, well then like this video. Let the comments reveal how you really feel, and if you're feeling a vibe, well, go ahead on and subscribe, but before you click, share this link. Welcome Wi-Fi's to my hunters, gatherers, and Neo-Anderthals episode of The Wireless Woman. And you already know what time it is. We are going to call that roll. I need all of my hunters and gatherers, and if you don't know it yet, possibly Neanderthals to the front of the class. It's time to read aloud. Start talking to your neighbors. You get yourself together first. Exactly. Then you get your community together. Welcome back to all my old school Wi-Fi's and welcome in to my new school Wi-Fi's. Today we are going to be talking about hunters, gatherers, and the Neanderthal. Before we get into today's content, go ahead and do me a favor and like this video. If you like it, I love it. Also, before we get to it, go ahead and drop that fire headphones emoji into my comments because why not? Let's be honest, by now you already know I'm pretty dope. I'm dope. Yeah, I'm dope. So as many people know, the earth has existed for many millions of years now that we know of. It's been destroyed and recreated several times, a fact that in and of itself should make you a little bit weary about when we're going to have our next giant natural disaster, but I digress. So throughout the different versions of the earth that have been created and destroyed, created and destroyed, when we look down through the layers of civilization, we find animals that were here at one time that aren't here anymore. And as we're doing more and more excavation, we're finding different humanoid life forms that have predated what we know to be Homo sapien man. One of those is the Neanderthal. Now you have Cro-Magnon man, you have Homo habilis, you have Homo erectus, all these different evolving humanoid life forms. And from all of these predecessors comes the modern man of today. The problem with today's modern man is that he is placed in a world and in an environment that doesn't quite lend and adapt itself to our human strengths. Basically, we have developed so much comfort, ease, and luxury for ourselves that 
the coping mechanisms that we were given as homo sapiens to deal with our environment are largely ineffective and useless. We're seeing a lot more mental, emotional, physical, psychological, and even financial breakdowns that are coming as a result of a quickly adapting world to which most of us are unable to cope. Now, this was a crisis that faced the Neanderthal man at a certain point in time. We know from the history that Neanderthals and Homo sapiens overlapped in their existence at a certain point. Now, Neanderthals and Homo sapiens were not able to interbreed with each other. They were actually different species of humans, the same way you wouldn't see a cat mating with a dog and being able to make a viable offspring. That was the situation between Neanderthals and Homo sapiens. These Neanderthals were known to inhabit Northwestern Europe, and yes, yes, as you guessed, I am going somewhere with this. But if you had been here at the height of that group's existence, somewhere between 44 and 40,000 years ago, you would have noticed some very distinctively different things about this group from the Homo sapiens. Now, they do believe that around 24,000 years ago, both of these groups coexisted in what we would call an uneasy alliance. There was some intermarrying and interbreeding with them, but there were genetic deficiencies in the Neanderthal strain that would not allow them to be viable partners for Homo sapiens or have a viable genetic line. Now, here's the thing. When it comes to the Neanderthals, they had the larger brains. They were actually physically superior to the Homo sapien, but... What caused them to die out by and large over a long period of time was inner breeding. Because they were not breeding out and creating genetic variety within their strain, that over time led to genetic abnormalities that continued throughout their bloodline. Also, they became very unable to adapt to changes in their environment that called for skill sets that they didn't have. Now, for the greatest part of history, mankind has been an agrarian agricultural society. Even at the height of the industrial age, the industrial age was still driven by physical labor. But as we have moved from the industrial age into a digital age, into a technological new media age, we find that tens of hundreds of thousands of years of adaptation for the human mind and body that has brought the strongest, most fittest survivalist to this place in history, those are all of the traits and characteristics that are no longer vied for or viable in this culture and society. Now, if you don't see how that is creating an issue or a problem, So just like the Neanderthal at the height of Homo sapien, society found themselves obsolete when the needs of the environment or the social structure no longer lend itself to what a certain group of people have been cultivated to be able to do. Well, the Homo sapiens begin to kill them off. I mean, they were dying off but then they started to kill them off. So the last known Neanderthal man lived around the 1920s. And it is estimated that us Homo sapiens who live today are anywhere between 2.4 to 4% Neanderthal. Like I said, if you had been there 40,000 years ago, you would have noticed that the Neanderthal actually had the genetic predisposition to win the survival of the fittest, but their inability to adapt to change is what ultimately led to their extinction. All right, so this is, of course, a discussion about how we build the Black community. So taking everything that I've just discussed and applying it to where we are now at this place in history and 
even though black people cannot be considered a separate species from people of other races and ethnicities, you do have to consider our genetic differences as either lending themselves to our survival or being detrimental to it. You just have to. We live in a world where the distinctions that are being made are racial, are gender at times. And for that reason, and for that reason, certain groups have to adapt survival skills or else we find ourselves fundamentally obsolete in the society wherein we live. Anyone in this era that is not valuing education, craftsmanship, industry, trades, entrepreneurship is going to be phased out of the social machine. We have to honestly take a look at our viability as a culture. And oddly enough, I don't think the way forward for black people is the waves of trends that we see for the future. I don't think the way forward is information technology and media and influencing. I believe the way forward for black people, particularly because of our genetic predisposition is backwards. Is to be an agrarian agricultural society. I believe we are best suited for the land, for the earth. And oddly enough, <laughs> that's what we were brought here for. I know it can feel like we've come so far away from that, that to go back is to lose something. However, it is our craftsmanship. It is our work ethic. It was us that came up with the cotton gin and uses for peanuts. It was us who taught Europeans how to cultivate the earth. It was mm. us who built great civilizations. It was us who built great pyramids and had that architectural mindset to be able to envision something like that, even to build it. I mean, the Mayans had pyramids. And every other non-European culture of people realizes that. They realize the need to be connected to their work. It's hard to be protective over anything that you feel no ownership of. It, if we are going to be able to defend our image, our work, our lineage, our legacy, our destiny, we have to own it first. That would be the only reason why we would need to secure it. The reason we don't secure our communities is because we don't own them. If you could be assured that you could transfer ownership throughout generations, well, you would defend that with your life, which is exactly what Homo sapiens did, which is why we all are them today. So when Neanderthals became a threat to the ongoing bloodline of Homo sapiens, they exterminated them. And I don't care what anyone says, survival of the fittest is genetically wired into all creatures. All creatures, even ones that don't have a higher cerebral cortex like humans, even animals are driven to survive at all costs to any other creatures around them. Even within their own peck or pride, males will kill off the weaklings of their clan. Even if you go to a, a lion pride, they will kill off the weaker males in their clan to make sure that that DNA, that those genetics do not weaken the bloodline. Yes, yes, I am still going somewhere. Yes, I am. So males, males, they are naturally called to be hunters to be hunters, whether they hunt singularly alone or in packs, their job, their fundamental sole purpose is to go out into the world. They're built this way. The reason that their sexual organs are on the outside is to make them impervious to the same type of infections that keep women from being out in the field. Men are stronger 
their senses are sharper in certain ways than females. A lot of people don't know, but women see better than men do, particularly after they've eaten. That's why sometimes if you take her out to eat, she don't like you after the meal is over. Well, her eyesight got a little bit more acute while she was consuming her meal. Fun fact. Men hear, they hear better than women do. I know women, I know, I, I know that's hard to believe, but men's hearing is much, much more acute than ours. It's measurably different. And it is because they have to have very keen hearing in order to perceive threats that we wouldn't ordinarily hear. They do be listening. They just be acting like they don't be listening. They hear better than you do. I jokes on us jokes on us so women and men are made differently for the functions and purposes that they serve in society there's a reason for that and there's no amount of living in your truth or emotional feelings that changes the physiological makeup of men and women and i know that they canceled jk rowling for saying that but gender is a fact Race is a fact. These things are sacred and they can't be trespassed upon because you feel connected to a particular gender or race. We let men and women get away with gender fluidity. Or is it sex? Is it sex? Is it sex or is it gender? I get confused by how they're labeling these things now, but we let people get away with that. But we don't let white people get away with that. When Rachel Dolezal tried to claim blackness for herself. Black people, we were like, no, nope, no, you don't. Nope. We don't care if you tan your skin or, or what kind of frontal you put on. You're not one of us. Gender and race are sacred. These are things that people can't trespass. A person can say whatever it is that they want to say about the human experience, but they cannot categorize themselves in certain ways without sharing the existential experience of that particular group. So men are the hunters and women are the gatherers. When you take away a man's incentive to hunt, you take away the viability of the whole entire pack, of the whole entire group. Within a lion pride, the women do the hunting, but the men do the protecting. They're required to be in just as good a shape as the women, because if they are not, the women will eat them. The female lions will eat an alpha male who is incapable of protecting their pride, because I mean, that's his only function. Now, remember to think back to what I said about the Neanderthals and the Homo sapiens on this, and let us continue. Men and women are fundamentally different in how they psychologically approach mating women are gatherers they look for the fruit that's available for their family they're able to tell the difference between what's edible and what's poisonous their job is to be the qa the quality control over what the family is consuming out of food men hunt down food women gather food and based on their resources of tasting of of having the more acute eyesight than men they are able to determine what's food and what is not. And that's their primary function. Ladies, we have to look at this the same way in a dating environment. Our function is to cast a net, see what our pool of men is, and then to be the quality assurance checkers of making sure that whatever comes into our environment is good for food, that it's not toxic or poisonous. It's not your job to go out and hunt down the right man for you. It's your job to gather together based on your appeal as a woman, a viable group of mates, and then to select one. And this is a daunting task, especially if your goal is to be popular. If your goal is to be picked by a multitude of men, then the things that make you distinctive that will cause you to pull in the best possible partner for yourself, if you get rid of those things in lieu of being a more 
appealing partner, then you are going to miss being able to connect your unique strengths and abilities with the right person who can complement that. See, you want an equal yoke and you're not going to be able to establish an equal yoking with a partner if you haven't led with your true skills and expertise, with your unique abilities. We're looking for the strongest mates and partnerships that we can create based on our selection process. We're not looking to be picked. We're not looking to attract the type of men that we have to vie for and hunt for. We, we're not the ones that want to go out and shoot down a bison and drag it back home. But likewise, you have to be careful not to attract a Neanderthal. Like, even though these men look good, some of them have a very misogynistic caveman way of partnering you. Any man that acts like he has to club you over the head and drag you home like a side of beef, there's something wrong with that. He's missing some level of socialization if he's unable to present himself as a viable partner to you in a way that complements your strengths as a woman. The emotional, psychological, mental equivalent of being clubbed over the head by a man is a man who is so intimidated by what you bring to the table that he feels like he needs to level you or decimate you or bring you down emotionally, physically, psychologically, sometimes financially. Some of these men will get with you and quit their job just because they don't want you to be able to get away from them. Don't let y'all have some kids together. And he's at home not working because you don't want to break up the family. He knows that he can leverage keeping himself financially unable to take care of himself so that you will do that job for him. Like there are levels to this finesse game. And men are not the only ones that get finessed. There are times when women are pulled to the carpet to be the sole providers for their families. And I promise you, if you trace that relationship all the way back to its inception, you'll find a woman who chased a man. Almost every single time you will find a woman who at some point in that relationship showed that she had the capability to hunt for a man. Ladies, all I'm saying is rest in your femininity. And what may be gathering to you may not be the population that you want to entertain. I, if anybody understands that, it's me. But then you have to keep leveling up as a woman. You have to keep creating new dimensions in order to express your womanhood and your femininity that will attract the type of men that you want to select from. It's hard to be patient. It's hard to be pristine instead of popular. It's hard to be classic or vintage instead of contemporary. But you are not a carbon copy. You are an original. And because of that, sometimes you have to wait for your value to increase which your value when you're an original will always increase. You will always be more valuable at the end than you were at the beginning. You know, and I'm speaking to groups of women that are around my age, but I'm also speaking to women who are, in, who are 19, 20. I have a 16 year old daughter and these videos are being made as an anthology for her, for her to look on one day and be able to say, you know what, the wisdom of my mother is here preserved for me to look back on as a timestamp for where I should be in my life. You know, so many of us have been, so many of us have let the tides come in and wash away our footprints in the sand, but we have to raise a standard for these younger women. And at this point, the benchmark, the banner is in hell for what we as women will accept. And that's why we have so much toxicity and poisonous behavior in our homes. You know, would you bring something toxic and feed it to your child? But yet our children are watching us in toxic relationships. Like I'm speaking first person. I'm not pointing a finger at nobody else without these 
other fingers, these other three fingers being pointed back at me. But if we know better, we're obligated, we're responsible to do better. And that's the clamor that we're hearing from the gallery is black women, y'all need to do better. Okay, so let's do that. Let's stop catfighting with men in vlogs and undercutting each other, trying to be a pick Misha and being male identified and, and propping these men up to provide absolutely nothing to a family, to a community. Let's let us take a season. That's what the wildest woman was about. I took a year and a month and it was just me. You know, it was just me. I was in a separation going through my divorce. I had set an intention with myself that my separation would be just that, that it wouldn't be a time where I would try to heal up my wounds with another man time that I would just spend with myself connecting with the singular version of myself that would represent all of the things that I had invested in myself as a person. You know, your marriage is not a person. It is an institution. Countries are made up of people. Churches are made up of people. Schools are made up of people. People lend their power and their creativity and their essence to these institutions, but a corporation is not a person. They legally went to court to prove that a corporation could not be for legal purposes considered a person. So these institutions are not people, you're a person. And so I had to take time and find out who the person was. And I was disconnected from my purpose when I lended myself as a person to an institution that did not represent my fundamental belief systems. I had to recover my self identity. And I spent that time doing that. And black women, that's what I'm urging you to do. What does it mean to be a black woman? We cannot continue to be male identified. It has cost us too much. We're moving in too much masculine energy, which is causing us to go out and hunt for men, hunt for jobs. It's fine. Listen, listen, we have to protect our communities. We have to do that. We have to protect our children. We have to do that. We have to open businesses and get education and do certain things in order for our community to thrive. Yes. But when it comes to our interpersonal relationships, you should be able to rest. You got to be able to come home and take that off, not to be subservient to another man, because your rest is an equal component in what that partnership is supposed to promote and represent. That in order for me to, quote, regain my manhood, Maybe that's I have to deny you your right peoplehood. No. Uh, it's not revolutionary. I'm not asking you to be weak. I'm asking you to be stronger than what your environment would require from you. I'm asking you to be able to. I'm asking you to be able to multitask. To make sure you're giving yourself just as much rest as you do work. To make sure that you're moving in just as much feminine energy as the masculine energy that's being required from you out in the marketplace. You know, I'm asking you to learn how to be skilled at when to apply each and how. I'm asking you to multiply, to be multifaceted, to be the higher version of what we're watching our men be on right now. You know, if that's something that interests you, if that's something that you feel like is needed, if you need this rest right now, go ahead and drop that headphones emoji in the comments. And like I said, these comments are here to reveal how you really feel engaged with me. If you think that I'm incorrect or if I've missed something or if you have a voice to lend to the conversation, by all means, email me. My email address is admin at thewirelesswoman.com. And until the next time, I am your girl, Debbie and Nikki, your neighborhood wireless woman. Class is now dismissed. I will see you in the next episode. You took my soul from me.